think what I'm going to do is a blender. Send Roxy Thank you, and welcome, welcome here, welcome there, wherever you are worshiping with us, we welcome you and uh, say happy Easter, happy Easter. So excited to see so many folks here today. Uh, we, uh, I'll just remind you, if you have a prayer concern or praise you would like lifted up during the service, uh, these yellow cards are in the back of the pews. When we uh, do our hymn here in just a few minutes, you can wave it and the deacons will come around and pick those up, or if you want, you can bring it up here and drop it in this yellow basket or hand it to me, uh, whatever you're more comfortable with, uh, and I'll lift those up during our time of prayer. But now I encourage you to rise in body or spirit, and we will sing together number 224, Lo, in the grave he lay.
pray with me. Oh, gracious God, we do celebrate the fact that you arose and all on our behalf, oh God. We praise you, Jesus, this day and give you thanks for all that you are to us and ask you to move in the sanctuary in a mighty way this day. Gracious God, Brother Jesus, Holy Spirit, make your presence known. The power of Christ that we pray. Amen. Be seated and let's have the kids come up um, for our kids' moment with Mr. Dennis. Yeah, right there. Oh, either one. Either way. Oh, on the, on the pew. Sit, sit up here on the pew, guys. Yeah. There you go. You can sit. There's the room. Yeah, sit right here. There you go. Good morning. How many of you know what this morning is? Easter. It's Easter, isn't it? Lots of surprises. And you know what? Easter represents, it represents Jesus rising from the grave. And so we celebrate that. And in celebration of that, I want everybody to take one of these. Pick one that you like. Get one? Grab one, Asher. Did you get one? Oh, my. Oh my, yeah! Well, I was going to have you shake it and rattle it, but we already opened it. Yeah, shake it, okay. So, what, yeah, what do you think's in there? A couple of you already know. Yeah, there's candy. And that's what you expected, wasn't it, when you open an Easter egg? But what if there's stickers? Well, yeah, I didn't do stickers, I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't have little ones anymore. I'm sorry. But you know what? What would have happened? What would you have thought if when you opened that up this morning, instead of candy, you had one of these? That wouldn't have been a very pleasant surprise, would it? Gee, he did. I bet that was pretty nice too, wasn't it? Yeah. And that's what happened. Back when Mary Magdalene and another Mary went to the tomb to check where Jesus was buried, they had a rather unpleasant surprise because the stone on the front was rolled away. And Jesus, who they expected his body to be there, and they wanted to check and be sure that it was safe, was not there. But they were met by two angels. This is called an Easter surprise. And can you help me with this one a little bit? As I read the Easter story, every time I say Jesus, say, he is risen. Can we practice that? Jesus. He is, risen. he is risen. That's right. The two Marys looked and they saw the tomb was empty and they hurried away. They were surprised. They were afraid. But they were filled with joy as they ran to tell the disciples they met Jesus. They ran to him and they grabbed him and they worshipped him. Jesus said to them, don't be afraid. Go tell my brothers to leave for Galilee and they will see me there. Now that is what I call a real Easter surprise. They went to see Jesus in the tomb, but he was not there. He was risen. That is why when we see our friends on Easter, we greet them by saying, he is risen. And our friends reply, He is risen indeed. Let's close in prayer. This is a repeat after me prayer. Dear God, we thank you for this glorious celebration of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus. You forgot some. He is risen. We're not, surprised. We're not surprised. 
that the tomb was empty. He was risen just as he said he would. In his name we pray. Amen. And you read your... Yes. Wonder? Okay, you you're off to right. worship and wonder. Follow Miss Judy. Perfect. Later. <laughs> Were there any other yellow cards? Did we get all the yellow cards? Is there any more in the basket? Did I miss that? Nope. Okay. Just wanted to check. All right. Um, Corbin requests prayers for Elizabeth Grubbs, who is battling several health concerns. And Ann Buchholz requests prayers for uh, Parker Buchholz, her daughter, uh, and her recovery journey. So we want to keep those folks in our prayers. We also want to keep our friends over the Presbyterian Church in our prayers um, with the loss of their steeple. Um, I know that it's, it's going to be a lot for them. They're not sure they'll even be back in by Christmas. Uh, it's going to take a long time to do the repairs. So keep them in your prayers as they um, fellowship and, and worship in, in um, their Keller Hall over there. Well, let's take a moment then to center ourselves, um, go to God in prayer. At the end of this, we will uh, say the Lord's Prayer, and I invite all of you to join me in that. Will you bow with me? Oh, glorious God, Jesus, Rabone, teacher, we have spent the past six weeks asking questions. We have turned over every rock, We've shined a light in every dusty corner. We've opened the blinds. We've wrestled with the truth. We have sought after you. So, on this Easter morning, bring wisdom to our seeking. Move through this room until the walls echo with the sounds of alleluias. Roll back the stones that might prevent us from drawing closer to you. Calm our hearts. Say our names. Awaken in us the reality of your presence in our midst. We are here. We are listening. We are seeking after you. And we raise our alleluias. Holy One, we have lifted just a few uh, prayer concerns from our cards this morning, Lord, but I know that there are other concerns represented within our congregation, so we want to pause for just a moment and quietly and individually lift our concerns to you. Oh, what a gracious God you are. You are there in our celebrations, and you are there in our struggles. And when things look bleakest, you are right there, carrying us, supporting us, comforting us, weeping with us. You bless us in so, so many ways. And so this morning on this Easter, we pause, and we quietly and individually lift our praise and thanks to you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. You are alive in each of our lives. And we are so very gracious, O oh God, that we have now been adopted into the kingdom. We are sons and daughters of the Creator. Thank you for calling us beloved children. And we recognize that even as we are beloved children, we are part of the body of Christ. And so now we take our individual voices and blend them together saying the prayer that you taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
John chapter 20, verses 11 through 18. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been laying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there. But she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not touch me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Just a couple of weeks ago, we had our two granddaughters uh, staying at our house, and uh, they are five and eight, and we were heading down to Bloomington, and um, the eight-year-old noticed off to the right as we were heading down that there was a big white cross. She said, look, Grandma, look, there's a cross. I said, yes, and she goes, is that the one Jesus died on? I said, no, no, and I tried to explain to her that the crucifixion had happened on the other side of the world. It had been many, many years ago, and so that wasn't the same cross. And she goes, well, what happened to that cross? I said, well, that's a very good question, uh, but we don't really know. <laughs> it would be really hard to track down. My understanding is that a cross was used for more than one execution, so probably someone else was killed on that cross uh, so we just really aren't sure what, what happened to uh, the cross of Christ. This is when the five-year-old joined the conversation, the one that wanted a sticker in her egg. <laughs> and with the innocence and wisdom of a child, she said, they should not have killed Jesus. He was just trying to make everybody happy. She voiced a deep theological principle that a lot of adults have a hard time understanding. Jesus came to make people happy, to make the world a better place, to share the joy and love of his Father, and to lead us into a deeper relationship with that very same God, our Creator. Today, we celebrate a part of the reason Jesus came, right? And I think the climax of his time here on earth, his resurrection. Will you pray with me? Oh, Holy One, we come seeking you, and we ask you to speak to us. Speak to us through your holy scriptures. Speak to us in ways that will help us and direct us. Speak to us in ways that will change us. Speak, Lord. Your servants are listening. In Christ we pray. Amen. So here at First Christian, we have spent our Lenten season seeking. Uh, we've asked ourselves many, many questions. Is this the fast I choose? Who will you listen to? How do we begin again? Will you give me a drink? Who sinned? Can these bones live? Where are you headed? We have been seeking, and I hope and pray we will continue seeking, uh, seeking guidance, seeking answers, seeking Jesus. 
And with each question that we have pondered over this Lenten season, our image of Jesus has been taking shape, hasn't it? Each of us has started creating this version of Christ within our heads. And so we come now to our final question in our Seeking series, and that is, who are you looking for? Each of the four Gospels uh, also consider this question. Um, of course, each of them, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, tell the same story of an empty tomb. Uh, they tell of women wondering what has happened with Jesus' body. But John's version, which we are looking at today, has some differences. There in chapter 20, we see some unique things just to John. So you might want to open your Bible or one of the Bibles there in the pews uh, to John chapter 20 so you can see the full story. John's version begins much like the others. Um, it was the first day of the week. For the others, it is dawn. But for John, who has throughout his gospel uh, given us this opposition between light and dark, it is still dark for John's gospel. And you might remember that for John, uh, someone is in the light if they understand who Jesus is, if they're a follower, if they know that Jesus is the Son of Man, the Son of God. But for those who do not understand who Jesus is, who are not following him, they, according to John, are in the dark. And so here in chapter 20 of John's gospel, we all begin in the dark because the Jesus we may have known has changed. If you are looking in your Bibles, you see verses 1 through 10 um, before what we had read this morning. Here, Mary is the first one. Mary Magdalene is the first one to come to the tomb, and she sees that the stone has been rolled away from the entrance, and so she runs back uh, to see uh, Peter and the other disciple, the gospel says, who we believe to be John, the, the disciple that Jesus loved, the scripture tells us. And um, there she, she runs and she says, uh, they've taken the Lord out of the tomb and we do not know where they have laid him. Well, this sets these two disciples on a run of their own. They race each other to the tomb. Uh, when they arrive, Peter is the first one to go into the tomb uh, while the other disciple remains outside. Both of them, each of them, see the burial wrappings that Jesus had been laid in and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Apparently, Jesus was not going to need these burial wrappings anymore, and so he left them behind. And he wasn't in a rush. He had time to take them off and even roll one of them up and, and set it nicely in a separate place. I think he knew that it would be a little while before anyone came out of the darkness seeking him. The text tells us that the other disciple, John, uh, saw and believed, believed that Christ was risen from the dead. And this is something that the scriptures tell us that none of them had really been able to wrap their heads around until just that particular moment. Then they went home. A little anticlimactic, I think. <laughs> <laughs> but they go home. Um, and, you know, perhaps for John, maybe he did believe that Jesus had been raised from the dead, but he had no idea he was still around. Maybe he couldn't fathom that he would actually be seeing him again. So they head home, home to a place of comfort. Home is the place where we can kind of sort things out. And then we pick up there with verse 11, which uh, Dennis read for us earlier. And uh, while they, the two disciples, return home, Mary Magdalene remains at the tomb. And Mary, she's one of these hard-on-her-sleeve kind of gals, <laughs> right? She has no problem sharing her emotions. She weeps openly. She weeps out of grief. She weeps out of loss. She weeps out of confusion, uh, not knowing where they have taken Jesus. Perhaps the disciples are beginning to see the light, right? But Mary, she remains blinded by the darkness of her emotions. In fact, she's so blinded, she doesn't even seem to notice that it is angels in the tomb that speak to her. And they ask her, woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, they have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. And then Jesus enters the picture. He stands before and he says to her, woman, why are you weeping? Who are you looking for? 
Supposing him to be the gardener, she said, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Clearly, she is looking for a dead man. She's surrounded by light, right there in front of her is Christ, and yet she remains in the dark. Reverend Danielle Schroyer says she sees only in her grief and only through the lens of tragedy. What else could she do? Then Jesus calls her by name. He speaks her name, and the dark veil is lifted, and she sees Jesus, truly sees Jesus for who he is. But in John's gospel, he wants us to go a step further, right? For John, the resurrection is not the end. It is the beginning. It is the beginning. Jesus addresses this, and he says, where we go from here? He tells her to go and tells the disciples that he will ascend to his father and our father, to his God and our God. So she can't be holding on to him. She can't hold him here. We have places to go and things to do. We need to move forward toward God. If we continue to read in John's gospel, you'll find that uh, still within this final chapter of John's gospel, a little bit later, Jesus appears to the disciples, and he sends them forward also, sends them forward in the Holy Spirit. But Thomas is not with them. And so we also have that story of Thomas and his doubt right? He wasn't there. He didn't see him, so he's not sure he believes. He needs his own personal encounter with the risen Christ. And when that happens, he too believes. But it's very clear that when this day began, in the dark, no one was looking for the risen Christ. And that's true across the Gospels. No one starts the day thinking, oh, I bet I see Jesus alive today. In the other Gospels, uh, there are women coming with spices um, to prepare the body because the body is dead. They come to prepare it um, and anoint it. They'd all heard Jesus say that he would die and on the third day be raised again, but none of them had been able to believe it, to wrap their heads around the idea. And I know that it's quite possible that there's someone here today, too, who finds this really hard to believe. You might want to believe, but you find it really hard to believe that this creator of the universe that put all of these natural laws in place then goes and suspends all these laws just for this supernatural event. And obviously, it was just as hard for people to (laughs) believe back then as it is for people to believe today. I think it's also really hard for some folks to believe and accept the love and grace that is freely given through God and Christ. I think perhaps it's not only who we are looking for, but where we are looking. In John, it is Jesus that asks Mary, who are you looking for? But in Luke's gospel... The women who have come with the spices encounter two men dressed in dazzling clothes, we would assume angels, and they ask them, why do you seek the living among the dead? And I think that happens so often in our world today. All too often people look only through death and tragedy, only see the negativity, and then wonder, where is God? But if we will just allow the veil of darkness to be lifted, we can see that there is light all around us. God shows up in the most amazing and unexpected ways so often. Our God, remember, is a God of resurrection, of renewal, of revival, of uh, new life. That is who our God is. Think of some of the stories that you know where new life has come, where revival has come. Think about this own, our own congregation right here. We have seen struggles within this congregation over the years. There have been uh, times where there have been schisms between members, and people thought this congregation would die. That here we are, thriving with our unqualified welcome to all. 
When COVID hit, people thought, oh, that's it for sure. Death is imminent. The church is gone. But here we are surviving. Churches all over the world today are packed with people celebrating Easter. A God of new life indeed. And our friends over at the Presbyterian Church, just a few blocks away, right? There are people that thought, oh, what are they going to do? They won't be able to have church anymore. They know that church isn't the building. (laughs) The church is the people. And so they just move the people over to Keller Hall. And our brothers and sisters are over there worshiping this morning, just as we are worshiping here. Our God is a God of resurrection. And all of these things are possible because he is alive. He is alive. We then are an Easter people who also live into resurrection time and time and time again because he showed us how we are empowered and powered by love and grace. And if you're someone that has doubts about all of this, that's okay. That's absolutely okay. God is big enough to handle our doubts, and in my experience, doubt does not cancel faith, but instead it encourages it to keep seeking. Seeking. Seeking a relationship with God, with Christ. Seeking a personal encounter with the risen Christ. He's ready to have that with each and every one of us. But each of us has to make our own decision, right? We have to decide who are we looking for and where will we look. But I encourage you to don't don't stop asking questions. Continue seeking. Why do you seek the living among the dead? Christ the Messiah is risen just as he said. Go tell the world all that you've seen today. The tomb that is empty, the stone rolled away. Why do you seek the living among the dead? Why do you seek the living among the dead? Christ the Messiah is risen just as he said. Go tell the world all that you've seen today. The tomb that is empty, the stone rolled away. Why do you seek the living among the dead? Why do you seek the living among the dead? Christ the Messiah is risen just as he said. Go tell the world all that you've seen today. The tomb that is empty, the stone rolled away. Why do you seek the living among the dead? Why do you seek the living among the dead? Jesus the Christ is alive.
Holy One, we are alive because you are alive. We are enlivened in our lives, Lord, to just go forth and be co-creators with you, creating new life, looking for resurrection wherever we can. Believing hearts are set afire. Thank you for all that you are and continue to be for each and every one of us as we celebrate you this day. It's in your holy name we pray. Amen. You know, it would have been really easy on that Easter morning for Jesus to just roll the stone back, walk down to the center of town and make a big announcement, right? Declaring death has not won. We're good. I'm out of here. But he didn't do that. He waited in the garden. He wanted to be there for the people who needed him the most. He waited for Mary. And he called her by name. She stopped crying. He gave her reason to hope. So if you're someone who has ever doubted that God's love is for you personally, I hope the story is a reminder for you today that God is waiting in the garden for you. And he's always there, even on your hardest days. He remains close by. It's the same God that has saved a seat at this table for each and every one of us. God invites you to come. Come to the table, whether you're dancing with joy like Mary or still feeling a little lost. Come with your questions. Come with your hunger and desire to know. Whether this is your first time or your hundredth time to come to the table, you are invited by the living Christ. The feast is a reminder that God's table is big enough for all of us. Christ invites, so all are welcome. doesn't matter if you're a member of this church or any church. If you're seeking the love and grace that Christ so freely gives, you are welcome at the feast. And I hope everyone uh, was able to pick up their communion on the way in. If you did not and you would like communion, just, just let us know and we'll get that for you. Is there anyone that did not pick up communion that would like communion? We're good? All right. Because here, all are welcome. Let us sing to prepare our hearts for communion. Who are you looking for?
Jesus gathered there with his disciples in that large upper room to celebrate the Passover. Jesus looked around the table at those that he loved so very much, those that he knew were about to face some of the darkest days they would have ever walked through. He tried to prepare them, telling them that Judas was going to betray him and that Peter was going to deny him, but they didn't believe him. He tried to tell them that he would die and be raised on the third day, but they just couldn't believe it. They didn't know how to make that work in their brains. Jesus knew everything that was before him. He knew about the mock trial overnight, and he knew about all the horrors of the cross. And he also knew about the empty tomb, or the tomb where he would lay. But he knew, too, that it would eventually be empty. He knew about resurrection. He knew how that would take their darkness and turn it into full-blown light, not only for those around the table, but for everyone, as all are offered eternal life. The knowledge of that kept him there for that one last supper. So he stood and he took bread and he lifted it to heaven and blessed it. He broke it and he passed it among them. He said to them, take and eat of this, all of you. This is my body given in sacrifice for you. I ask that when you do this in the future, you remember me and my love for you. And he stood again, and he took a cup, and he lifted that to heaven and blessed it. And he passed that among them as well. He said, take and drink of this, all of you. This, this is the blood of the new covenant, a new covenant. And when you do this, remember me and my love for you. In just a few moments, we'll hear some music that Sean's going to provide for us, and I'm going to encourage you during that time to take of uh, the bread that's in the bottom of your cups. This reminds us that we're called to this individual relationship with Christ, right? But I want you to hold the juice, the cup, and we will take that together, reminding us that we are one in the body of Christ. For these gifts, let us pray. O oh, gracious Heavenly Father, on this glorious Resurrection Sunday, we celebrate the risen, the risen Son that you provided. We know his suffering, but we know that he overcame all. We thank you for that gift, a gift more that we can only imagine how difficult it must have been for you to provide. But we are grateful that you have provided us with that gift. Help us always keep that in mind and in our memory. And may we raise praise to you and your precious Son for all of our days. In his most holy name, we do now pray and commune. Amen.
Let us now partake as one in the body of Christ. And through his blood we are made new. Our cups are empty. Our hearts are filled. Having been blessed by our time of communion, we come now to that time in our worship service where we lay before the Lord our tithes and our offering, just a little of what God has given us and ask us to be good stewards of. Please join me in prayer. Father, we return a portion of the bounty that you provide us. We pray that these gifts will be worthy in your eyes. We thank you for all that you do provide us. And we pray that we might be good stewards of these gifts and that we might utilize them to further your work here on earth. Pray that you'll help us truly be your hands and your feet as we take your word out into the community and into the world which so desperately needs your love, your grace, and your mercy. In your most holy name we do pray. Amen. You know, we put our faith into action in many, many ways. One way is to worship, and I hope you'll all continue to uh, join us for worship next week. Um, And if you are a guest here today, if I haven't already said that, please uh, visit our Welcome Center. We have a gift over there for you. And um, if you didn't fill out your connection card, we'd also love for you to do that. You could still drop it in the boxes on your way out. Uh, We'd love to have record of your attendance today. Uh, Next week, we are going to look at our sacred place, and after uh, worship, we're going to have, uh, invite everyone to stick around, and we're going to update the congregation on our sacred places work. We have the opportunity, or or actually already in, uh, taking part in a cohort uh, with Indiana Landmarks and Sacred Places, where uh, we are learning ways uh, to take care of this sacred place, of um, our buildings and property, and uh, we'll, we'll bring everyone up to date on where we are with that and how that is going. And then we'll begin looking at the prayer of Jabez and a Sunday school class that I'll be uh, doing will be on prayer. So if you've wanted to deepen your prayer life, you can stick a, plan to stick around for that uh, starting on the 23rd. So my challenge for you this week is to dis- just try to believe. If it's hard, that's okay. Think of all the resurrection stories you've seen in your life and imagine how God has been present in each and every one of those. And maybe that can help you find the risen Christ. Thank you so much for joining us as we sing our closing song. If there's anyone who has never committed your life to Christ and you're ready to do that after today's uh, service and, and feeling God's presence in this place, if there's someone who wants to do a transfer of membership into this place, whatever it is, I invite you to come forward as we sing Christ the Lord is Risen Today, number 216.
All right. I am so excited to welcome these folks. <laughs> I have to tell you a little story here, how we first met. <laughs> Can I tell yeah, that story? Yeah. <laughs> So um, I came to this church a little over six years ago, and the day that I was being installed by the region, uh, Rick Spless came in and goes, do you know the Brandenburgs? And I said, who? <laughs> <laughs> he said, Sherry and Mike Brandenburg, they're here today. I said, well, I saw, I, no, I don't know them. And he goes, oh, I do. And so actually Rick Spleff introduced us. So we've been together for a little while. Yes. And I'm so excited that you're ready to make it official. Yes. So, Sherry, do you believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God, and do you reclaim him today as your personal Lord and Savior? I do. And plan to serve him in this local congregation? I do. Amen. Mike, I also ask you, do you believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God, and do you reclaim him today as your personal Lord and Savior? I do. And plan to serve him in this local congregation? Yes. Amen. Welcome. Thank you. Welcome. Go out and make it a glorious day. All God's people say, Amen. Amen. Thank you. Yeah, the frame. Uh, 